Good day, grade 12. Welcome to lesson number 73 from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student, grade 12. You also have grade 11 and grade 10. Right, let's get started. Right, in this lesson, uh, we are introducing oligopolies. I've mentioned them in passing, but now I'm going to go in depth. All right, uh, before we go there, we had a homework in the previous lesson. Explain how natural and artificial monopolies act as barriers to entry. All right, there we have it. You can pause and answer and, and mark yourself. Back to the lesson. Oligopolies, what is this? This is a scenario when we have only a few firms in that industry. Okay, uh, the, reason, the reasons vary. In some cases, entry can be uh, allowed, but the reason why there can be few firms could be that maybe it's a very difficult industry or whatever it is that they are making in that industry maybe is uh, probably difficult, like it needs you to be an expert maybe. But in some cases, uh, there can be, uh, a, by law, maybe the government can say four network service providers is enough in this country. So you come as the fifth one, and then they don't give you the license to do so. So in that case, you see that there is that element of restriction. So we can say, in entry in an oligopoly, it, it varies from free to restricted. All right. So what are the characteristics? Now, it's, these characteristics don't come from my head. I'm going to, I follow the examination guidelines. So we want to see oligopoly in as far as the number of businesses is concerned. We've answered that already. Nature of product, entrance, control over price, information, example, demand curve, economic profit, decision making, collusion, productive and allocative efficiency. So let's see. All the characteristics number one number of firms there are very 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 few firms in this industry celsi mtn vodacom data fnb absa standard bank capitec net bank like that you see you can count them even if you count and you get to 15 like maybe you could do in uh in engine sasso uh what's that total uh, Caltex, you see, there you can find the likes of like nowadays we have MBT and so on, but you see that there are not so many. So, even if there are 20 in a country like South Africa, they are very few ne? because we have other industries where we have way too many firms, for example, farmers. How many are they? We can't count Mr. Maslam, Mr. Whoever, Mr. Whoever. No, no. There are way too many farmers, we can't really tell how many they are. But these industries that I've mentioned, banks, look at them, there are not so many. Uh, I mentioned what? Uh, network service providers, MTN, CLC, Vodacom, you see, there are not many. Right, so few firms in the entire industry. Now, how is the product? Uh, the product can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. If we look at petrol, I mentioned Sasso, I mentioned um, engine garage. If you look at those petrol stations, they are selling a homogeneous product, and little 95, and little 92, like that, uh, 93, or diesel. You see, uh, if the same petrol I'll get from all of them. But now, so does it matter where I top up my petrol? Okay, that's where non price competition comes into play. Okay, personally, I mostly top up at engine garage. I also go to Shell sometimes. Okay, mainly those two. Okay, let me give my reasons. First and foremost, why do I go out of my way to get to engine? All right, the reason is I'm going to swipe with my FNB card and then I gain e-bucks. Do you see that? I'm not going there for, for the price because the price is the same. If I go to engine in total, the price is the same. They'll charge me the same amount because that price is actually regulated by the government. Government says petrol is going up or petrol is going down. So this applies, uh, you know, in South Africa. So I don't choose a petrol station for the price because they are all charging the same price and the product is homogeneous. But I could go to uh, Angel just to swipe with my FNB card so that I gain e-bucks. You see that? 
The other reason I go to Shell is because I can swipe my clicks card and I gain points from clicks. So do you see that if I go to clicks uh, to, to, to Shell, I might as well gain points. When I go to clicks to buy something, then they tell me, uh, oh, you have points and these points are worth 45 rands. Do you see I've saved 45 rands just because I put petrol, because I was going to put petrol anyway. Then with FNB, uh, after some time I'll check my e bucks I see that I have 5,000 e bucks and that's a lot of money. I mostly use it to buy petrol, no, not petrol, to buy airtime. So sometimes I buy airtime, then I have so much money in my e bucks account and it comes simply for me topping up at engine. You see that? All right, so that's the, the product can be the same. And um, we also have heterogeneous where it's a bit differentiated. I explained entry before, it varies from free to restricted. You will see that some industries, uh, can I join the likes of Shell? Yes, I can. But how come there are few? Maybe it's not so easy, something like that. Right, the next one is um, uh, collusion. Yes, since there are few, they can collude. Simply because there are few, they can collude. But now, are they going to go around colluding? No, it's illegal to do so. They, we talked about the Competition Act, so they are not allowed to do so. They'll be in trouble with the Competition Commission. Right, information is incomplete. I mentioned this, if a product is, homo, is heterogeneous, <coughs> you, you mostly, you know, you don't know how they made it. And so this, by, by this I mean, look, if, um, if F&B comes up with an idea, e-wallet, do you think they'll share the information with uh, APSA and tell them, okay, you do it like this and then like this, then money is gone? No, they stay away. They don't want APSA to find out how they did it. So APSA will try to crack their minds until they come up with their own and then they'll give it a different name and call it cash send. And you'll see that the way you send a cash send is different from the way you send an e-wallet with FNB. But if you look at the concept, it's the same. You understand? So information is incomplete there. Control over price. Oligopolies are price makers. They don't really care as much about the price that they charge because some of them will say, look, you know, uh, people want convenience. So if I know that I work throughout the week and weekends, and then I want to do my banking, but now the time I know of the banks are closed. And then there's this other bank that is open until six and I knock off at five and all the other banks are closed. You see that I could choose that bank simply because I can do business with them uh, at six o'clock because they close late. Do you see that? So I'm not going to choose the bank for the bank charges, but I'm going to choose it for other things that they are uh, offering me. So, so the bank is not going to be a price taker. They will charge a price that they want and they know they are going to get customers for their unique ways of doing things. The next one is the demand curve. We say that it's kinked, and I'll be showing you just now. I'll be showing you just now uh, what that looks like. Okay, the demand curve is kinked like that. You see? And this is our D is equal to A. Ah, so this part here is the best price that an oligopoly can ever charge. This is the correct price. Okay, let's say two. That's the correct price. That's the price. That's the best price ever. All right, so the demand curve is king. We'll explain why I say it's the best price. You'll see that um, trying to increase the price. Okay, let me just show you here. Uh, by in the quest of gaining uh, or, or making more money, if an oligopoly increases their price to, let's say, 2 rand, 30 cents, just like that, 2 rand, 30 cents, what happens? You see the small increase, the small increase, this one, it doesn't match the, the loss in quantity, you see? So if they increase 
the price by a small margin, they lose a lot of customers. What if they try to use price to gain customers? Let's say they try to charge one rand, 80 cents. You see, they reduce the price. Okay? And if I do that, look at that. They reduce the price by this margin, but look how many customers they gain. Very few. Very few. So, what's the best price for the oligopoly? Where the demand curve keeps increasing the price to try and gain custom and to try and make more money, you lose a lot of customers. Reducing the trial price to try and attract, you attract by just a few. You see, so the best price for an oligopoly will be right there, two rents. Like in the long run, can an oligopoly make economic profit? The answer is yes, it's very possible. The next one, output, don't worry much about it, but yes, output is low. Non-price competition, I've said it a thousand times, yes, they do that. I talked about uh, opening hours, I talked about me going to Engine or, or, or Shell for my own reasons. That's non-price competition. It's not the price that takes me there, but it's other things. All right. So now I'm going to spend time on this one because many people struggle with this. All right, this right here is, okay, let me do it like this, because for people to understand, you have to draw and show them easily. All right, so this is our quantity, and this is <laughs> our quantity, this is our price. Okay, this is our quantity, this is our price, this is our demand curve. Now, what do you notice about this, this part, first and foremost? This part is highly elastic. So I can say this part here is highly elastic. Then we have this part. This one is inelastic. Are we clear? Now, let me take you back to grade 11. Let me take you back to grade 11. Maybe you will understand the concept. Right. You see, I want to draw an inelastic demand curve here. And I want to draw an elastic. And I want to make it as elastic as it can be. Maybe like that. You see? This one is highly elastic. This one is less elastic. Right. With each, I want to give a price of 10 rents. Okay. And a quantity of 10. So I want that to match. 10. Okay. And this is 10, and this is 0, this is 0. Okay, now, what do you think will happen if this firm increases their price? If this firm increases their price, let's say, to 15, what's going to happen is this. They are going to lose quantity from 10. Now, if this is 0 and this is 10, what do you think this is? Look at this. Look at that. I think it dropped by two. So this is probably an eight. Yeah? All right. Let's do the same. Let's replicate this. If the price goes up by to 15, it goes up by five as well. Same margin. Yeah? Look at that. Price has gone up. By the same margin, 10, by, by five, by five. But look at quantity demanded here. It drops significantly so we say this if this is 10 and this is 0 this doesn't look the same this looks like a 4 do you see that so this drops by 2 this drops by 6 so this is a drop of 2 and this is a drop of 6 why is it that this one drops by 2 and that one by 6 because we are trying it's more like we're trying to stretch the word elastic we're trying to stretch two things here. The other one can be elastic. I'm trying to look around if I can see something. Okay, this. Do you see that it stretches? Ne? So yes, it's, it, there's a degree of elasticity here. But what if I take a rubber band and try to stretch it? Which one is more elastic? You see the rubber band is more elastic than this. So uh, when you pull, when something happens, how much response do we get? Here we do get response, but not as much as this. So yes, here we do get response. So this one is, yes, elastic, but not as much, inelastic. 
This one is highly elastic. It responds more. A change in price, I think you went to school, you understand what I'm saying? All right, then let's come to this one now. So what are we saying in as far as elasticity and all those things that I'm explaining is concerned? Let me try to explain this one right here. Right. Uh, this is our marginal revenue. You see that? The same. This part here is uh, king. Is responding to this here, the king's demand curve. <coughs> now, what is the best price? If you take out your calculator and do some calculations here, uh, try it with eight rand. Try it with ten, and try it with twenty, with twelve. Do you see that? If the business charges ten and hundred. A simple math will tell us it's 1,000, right? 1,000, because 10 times 100, that's 1,000. And then drop the price to 8, in aiming to gain there. It's 8 times 12. What does it give you? Do the math. You will see it's less than this one here. Then, on the other hand, try to increase the price. You see how many customers you are going to lose. Way too many customers will be lost. Look at this. So this top part, the, 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 uh, so what we are saying with the demand curve here is that we are saying the, 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 the top part of the market price on a demand, in an oligopoly, the, the top part of the demand curve, the part of the demand curve above the market price or above the, 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 ex, the, the, the best price, that part of the demand curve is what? Let's have a look. It's elastic. It causes a big loss of customers from 100 to 40. You see? And if we check here, the wait, the, the bottom part, I didn't even make it as elastic as I should have. Because if I was to make it more elastic, it would be it would make more sense. Right? Maybe this would be 110. Now if we calculate 110 by 8, it will be way less than 1000 you see so this is not as elastic as inelastic as i wanted it or as i want it to be for you to understand the concept you see that so if you check this one in our scenario here it's more like this but in this case we are talking about a decrease in price let's say if we try to reduce the price then you gain customers but look not so many why because it's like trying to pull this. Yes, it responds, but not as much. There, it responds a lot. So basically, that's what we're saying there. So check here. You'll have to read from here. It's what I was explaining right here. You read up until quantity, and then you proceed from quantity to demand it. You go through that. It's explaining everything that I was explaining right here. And you can also come back to this. It will make you understand the concept of elasticity. And I'm still going to use it when I do draw up a whole comparison of all four market structures in the very, very last lesson of this, to of this, uh, this topic. Right, so this concludes the lesson. And we have number one to six. KFC is a typical example of, do you think it's monopoly? Do you think it's whatever? The, or, or, then the oligopoly is a price, do you think it's a price maker or price taker? A formal agreement between oligopolists to increase price is called, what kind of a collusion? And uh, this one is a legal one. The upper segment of the king to demand curve, do you think it's elastic or inelastic? The oligopolist is faced with, do you think the demand curve is kinked or downward sloping? The oligopolist may uh, makes A or N, economic or normal, profit in the long run. Alright, so this sums uh, our lesson, lesson number 73. I'll see you in lesson number 74.